The mechanical segments are similar to the T-Rex in their, uh, their weldments. They're huge steel, almost like a, a train or a bridge construction. And they've got miles of wiring running through the center section that basically is the nervous system. It he's, hooks he's, the points of motion. 12 tons. Yeah, and it hooks the, the points of motion up to the computer so you can control it with a, a level of safety and with a level of uh, finesse. There's a graphite skull, which is light and strong. I mean, everything has to be welded to a... Uh, it's all standard. welded to it's all welded to a mechanical substructure that, that has to be uh, no I mean but the standard of, yeah, yeah the welding has to be you just can't tack this stuff together it it, it has got to uh, no and uh, a certain engineering grade because and we actually have the weldings uh, uh, the weldments are actually tested there is a, uh, a a certifying agency that comes in and will actually tell you whether or not you have a good weld or a bad weld the detail you can see just in the tongues alone and there's multiples of everything because there was a sort of a stunt version done and then there was the the main hydraulic one and sometimes there's backup pieces to accompany that if you know it's going to be damaged huge foot uh, but it's not just colored in one big broad sweep of color there's a lot of breakup and uh, detailing there's the eyes which were kind of riffed off of a crocodile. They're starting to assemble pre-painted skin pieces, but those weren't not, uh, those wasn't completely finished until it was packed up and moved down to set, which is quite an undertaking in itself, because this would go on a huge uh, tractor trailer. And it was a lot bigger than the, than the T-Rex. The actual door to the building had to be opened all the way to the ceiling because when we built it, it was too big to get out. We had to actually damage our own building to get it out the door and then fix the door. The transportation of this being lifted with cranes, I mean, the logistics alone, it's enormous. This is 3 o'clock in the yeah. morning when we're moving it out. Here we are starting to load it in. You can see the, the transportation. It had to travel at night on a certain path because it couldn't go under bridges and they were, they were afraid, they meaning the uh, city of Los Angeles, that it had to travel at a certain time period because it would stop traffic. We needed to have it to Universal Studios before 7 a.m. Harder to move than moving a house. Funny story on the first Jurassic Park was uh, they didn't, one of the security guards didn't know it was coming and wanted to turn it away. Here we are finishing it up on, uh, on set, uh, putting the final details together. It still, it still had a ways to go. It's starting to look more real, but uh, it's a lot of nuances still missing off of it. Just like with the T-Rex on the first Jurassic Park film, there's, there's an installation and a test and adjust phase when you first build it into the set. This was at one of the biggest stages at Universal. And they had this amazing jungle set built around it. It's, it's hooked down onto uh, almost like a railroad track, mm -hmm. which enabled it to move forward and backwards, and uh, then moving up and down on its cylinders. And as we stated earlier, uh, it could it was about a thousand horsepower. It really literally feels like a bus going by you when it's moving at full speed. This day was on a Sunday before we were going to shoot. We were there that whole weekend prepping it, getting it ready. Uh, there's a telemetry device and starting moving the hands around. And this was our opportunity. Actually, this was actually about a week before we were going to shoot, but we still had it come in on a Saturday when the other filming wasn't going on Saturday and Sunday so that we would start to get familiar with the creature, start to work out certain moves and and everyone would, would get up to speed on what the Spinosaur character was. 